Hello everybody, Dolphin Oracle here again, taking a look at Annex 13 and making a persistent live USB or a live USB stick that unlike other live USBs will allow you to save changes made to the file system. So for instance, saving programs, saving files, saving folders, you can save that, make it save that to your USB. Not only that, but with Antics, when you do an install from that new changed live USB, the installation, the, the, the programs you put on that USB stick will install to the Annex, your new Annex installation. For instance, I'm running this uh, recording off of a live USB, and I have added several applications, one of which being the Screencaster software, but also other things, VLC, uh, Caden Live, Handbrake, a few other odds and ends that will allow uh, me to, to do the things I want to do from the software on the USB stick and also when I want to make a new installation all those packages and software will be automatically installed. Uh, what doesn't get installed it can be a little trickier to get configuration changes installed to, your, to, to move over to the new installation like themes and home and anything that would be stored in your home folder there's a way to do that and we'll talk about it after we take a look at actually making the live USB sticks but uh, all in all it is a great way especially if you are in the habit of wiping your system out occasionally and installing the same programs over and over and over again uh, this is a great way to do that and save you some hassle. There are two utilities for doing that, uh, for making the USB. One uh, is in the Disks tab called Annex to USB, and that'll allow you to from a from another one system to another, or uh, that'll allow you to. Um, either do it from a already installed system and as long as you have the original ISO or you can do it running live as long as you have the original ISO and it will make a whole new system for you on the USB uh, stick. Uh, another way to do it is if you have a stick made with say unit bootin um, that you can set it up after the fact as long as you are running live. Uh, as long as you have the Annex Control Center on the live CD you can set that up after the fact. So let's take a look at using Annex to USB to do that. Okay, so I'm back and I currently have uh, we're going to go to uh, in the Antix Control Center and we're going to go to the Live tab actually no, I'm sorry, it's Discs tab and click on Annex to USB. Now just so you realize what I'm doing here, what you know is for what I'm doing, I'm still running my Live USB doesn't have to be. It can be an installed Annex system. The Annex to USB is installed with a regular system. And I also have a second USB key installed uh, right now that's showing up. It's unformatted, or actually it's formatted, but it's blank. Uh, but it's showing up as SDC in the drive, uh, in the system. So I'm going to click on Annex to USB. It's going to ask for a root password. Okay, and here's the nice little utility that's going to pop up. And we're going to select the ISO, which I saved my ISO on for in the downloads folder. And we're going to use the 386 version uh, this time. And for the system partition, I'm going to use the whole device. EXT2 is good for. Uh, is good for uh, USB sticks. There's not so much journal writing. You can stick with FAT32 if you want. It's not going to hurt anything. XT3 is probably not going to hurt anything. Go ahead and stick with X to Linux for the bootloader. And I am going to go ahead and enable root persistence. You don't have to enable both of these. Uh, if you enable root, home is inferred. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 512. If you're, if you're, if you have a big stick, you could set that to whatever you want. And in fact, I'm gonna, I'm going I am gonna go ahead and change it. And just use the tabs. You can't type directly into the field. I don't think, anyway. No. So there's preset options. So I'm like a one gig uh, root uh, file system. What this is, this is the save file, if you can think of it that way, for the whole system, for any changes you make. So we'll click forward. And it says SDB1. You know what? I didn't change the device. I want to change from this is the stick I'm running live on. I want to change to SDC, the blank one. Okay. Nice little catch there, though, on the air. It's hard. It makes you think twice before you really screw something up. So you click forward, and it's going to tell you, okay, we're going to install 
this ISO, this is three, eight, Antics 13, 386 full. On the SDC, here's the glide, uh, the, what it is. Here's the size, the 4 gig one. We're going to do it with ext2. We're going to make a persistent file system, and it will be and, uh, we'll boot using the ext Linux bootloader. All data on the existing device will be erased. It's gone. Click OK, and it's going to do its thing. It's going to take a little while to prepare the disk. It does go ahead and reformat the drive, and it's also going to make the root file system file. Now what's interesting about the way this system will work is if you boot, when you reboot, you'll see the, boot, the regular boot menu you're used to, uh, but you'll be able to select the root persistence option. See, there you go. It's making the uh, file, it's moving the file system to the device. And, yep, relax, because it's going to take a little bit. Uh, as I was saying, it's uh, you'll be able to select root persistence from the drive, I mean from the boot menu, and you'll be in this persistent folder. Also, if you select the original just, uh, default entry on the bootloader, you're going to get the same live USB that you've always had, similar to a live CD. Okay, so now we've got the whole complete message, and we are ready to close this. We can close the window, you see process complete. And there we go. Now when I reboot, I'm going to reboot uh, into, uh, I'm actually going to boot this new USB stick into a virtual box environment uh, so that you can see the boot, what, you know, the selection of the bootloader entries and everything. Um, so uh, we'll pause here while I get the virtual box set up. It's going to boot the live USB we just made, and here is the boot menu. And this, the top entry is our normal entry. It'll start a normal live USB. Or we can come down here to root persistence now that we have root persistence and boot that. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so when you boot the first time with your new root persistence, it's going to say, hey, you got an insecure password, so root needs a new password. So I'm going to type in a new password. And it's going to ask for another one. You guys confirm it. Okay, and the root, the demo account, which is the default user account, is also going to need a new password. So you type that twice to confirm, and there you go. Now you've got it, and it's going to boot into your desktop. Okay, so here we come. We're going to get the standard default ROX ISWM desktop. Now it's going to ask us. Do we want? How do you want your root persistence set up? Do you want it to? Um, you can set this, the the way it saves, and the way you do it, you can set. You say automatic, which will save on shutdown and reboot. It doesn't ask. As long as you, you as long as you don't shut down from the terminal, it'll it'll catch it on a logout, shutdown, whatever. Semi-automatic, uh, it'll ask you if you want to save or not. In manual, it only saves when you tell it to. And there's a button in the Annex Control Center for that. I'm going to leave it to automatic. So there it goes. Confirms it. And there we go. So now any changes I make to the file system are going to show up. Uh, it's going to save them at the end. So I'm going to crack open rocks here. And I'm going to find a dummy file to move around just to show you what I mean. We'll move... Let's move this to the home folder. We'll copy it to the home folder. And then now we're going to save. Uh, actually, we're going to log out and shut down. And it's going to see, there it goes. Now it's saving. Again, you want to make sure that you select root persistence when you reboot. Okay, so it's rebooting back to the desktop. And as soon as it's finished loading, we'll crack open files. And there's our change. Our change is there. It doesn't matter what the change is. It'll stay on the USB. You can change the theme. You can change. You can install new software like I indicated in the, in the intro. Um, uh, but the only thing that won't necessarily change, and it'll all stay on the disk, on the, on the USB key. If you use the system off the USB, it will all remain on the USB, as long as you have room on the stick for the changes to be written to the root file system file. Um, when you do the install, it will take 
any program install changes and move them over to the new installation. So if you like VLC and Handbrake and uh, I don't know what else, uh, Tuxcart, I don't know, and you move and you do the install, all the programs move over. You might have to reconfigure them again, but all the programs will move over. Okay, so I'm going to log out of this and we'll come back and show you how we'll be back in our annex system and we'll show you how to set up a key made with UNet booting to get the same effect of the live USB. Okay, so we're back and I'm booting now from a USB key made with UNet booting. Actually, for those interested, the Windows version of UNet booting. And again, booting the uh, Antix 386 32-bit version can't select any of these options down here this time because I don't have persistence enabled on this. This is a standard um, a live USB made with UNet booting. So we're going to boot uh, from that. Okay, so now that we're up and running, we're going to open the Antics Control Center and we're going to go to the Live tab and we're going to go set up live persistence. It's going to be our root password, which is root, remember, because we're not running any customized version here. And it's going to show you, it's going to create the root system on the drive that's running the, li the, the live session. So, so here's the space. That's all right. That's our 4 gig drive. Here's your available space. This is the room you got left. Here's what RAM you're running. I'm running at 380 something because of the uh, uh, virtual box. So here's where it wants to put the persistence path and, get, and give it a name. And here's the actions. And what you want to do, you can cr you want to create a root persistence. That'll be the option to let you have all the uh, programs and everything installed. Create root persistence. Click OK. How big a file do you want? I'm going to make a nice. I'm going to make. I'll make an easy one. I'll make it 256. But I suggest that if you're going to be installing programs, you go for a gigabyte or more. Uh, but just for the purposes of argument, I'm going to say 256. That's going to be enough to to save simple files. Uh, file system type. Um, this is the file system inside the root file system that your file that you're creating. It's hard to explain, but imagine a bottle that you're creating on the drive, and this is the the file system for the bottle. I'm going to stick with the XT2. It's fine. Here it is. It's going to tell you what it's going to do. Click yes. And now it's going to act like it's doing nothing. And it may take a minute. I am going to pause my video right now while it finishes doing uh, what it's doing. But trust me, it is in fact making the root file system. Okay, so we're back, and when it's finished, it's going to show the success, and it's going to show your root F file system, and how it's made, and how much is used. And again, this is where it's going to to save everything. Now you can you can do things like make um, uh, change. Uh, change the path where you're saving things or whatever but for the purposes of this video this is what we're looking for the root the root persistence whoops I didn't mean to do that so yes and when we reboot now with the persistence you will see that it will go through and ask the same questions about how do you want to save the persistence file so here we are, we're back to booting, and I it's again going through and seeing that there's a root file system, so you need a new root password. This is a password you create. You end up typing it twice, and you got to type it for the default user, which is demo. And there we go. We're now we're going to boot into a fresh desktop, ready for you to customize however you want, and the files will be saved at boot time. I mean, at when you exit, when you log out, or when you shut down from the Annex shutdown tools. See, here's our autosave configuration, automatic. There you go, Bob's your uncle, you're done. So, there you go. That's setting up a live USB. Play around with it, install some programs, see how you like it. Drop tips, tricks, and how, uh, you get tips, tricks, and how-tos at annex.mepis.org, or drop a post in our forums at annex freeforums.org. Leave me a note in the comments if you like. I appreciate it. And give me a like and a subscription. Draw me a request of what you might like to see. 
in the future. This is Dio signing off. Have a good, great night.